Hey guys, I'm Shada and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to do a hand lettered calendar page that you can use for your bullet journal or your wall. This is the November of 2017 page and we're doing a tea theme. So as usual I'm just starting with my piece of cold pressed watercolor paper. I've got a little bit of a smaller one this month and then I've done my grid of numbers using graph paper to keep them straight and square. Of course I've transferred that grid onto tracing paper. Um, and same with my illustration and my hand lettered month. It's all transferred onto tracing paper. That's going to help me transfer the full design onto the watercolor paper. And of course you can see here I'm just taping everything in place um, in order to transfer it. So once it's all centered, I'm going to grab my graphite transfer paper, place it dark side down, and then I'll just take a nice sharp pencil and I'll start going over everything in order to transfer it. And you can see when I move it, um, that's really effective for transferring um, the entire design. It does smudge a little. I know sometimes um, depends on how humid the climate is. I'm near the ocean, so I'm getting a lot of smudges today, but that's okay. I'll erase them. And I am speeding through this part, and it's because we do this every month. So if you're sort of like, whoa, slow down, just go back and watch some of the earlier hand lettered calendar page videos from 2017. Once everything is transferred, I will just go over my transfer with my Pigma Micron. I'm using the 05, that's, as I always say, sort of my Goldilocks nib, so it's just not too big, not too small. And I am thickening the down strokes on my November to give the look of faux calligraphy. And I'm just going to fill in the T here at the middle of the illustration. And then um, before I go over it with Pigma Micron, I'm going to add some color. And today I'm using my uh, watercolor pencil crayons or watercolor pencils. I also have my favorite tea and my favorite mug here and they're sort of serving as my models so I can look at them as I'm adding the color. This is the jasmine tea that I can't live without. I drink it every day. And then this is my favorite mug that I've had for, I want to say at least 15 years. I got it in Chinatown when I first moved out on my own. So it comes everywhere with me. So that's what I'm drawing and illustrating today. And to illustrate the mug, you'll see here, I'm just sort of mixing the light blue and dark blue uh, pencil. And I'm not really doing a floral pattern. I'm doing a bit of an abstracted pattern where I just leave a little bit of white space to represent those flowers. And then for the tea tin, I mixed a little yellow and orange and watercolor pencil crayon is so fun. It's like being a kid again. You just get to sort of color in like a coloring book. And then you take a little bit of clean water and a clean brush and you just add water to, uh, to the color. And it immediately on contact with that water turns into watercolor paint and you just want to add um, lots of water and allow it to really look like the wonderful watercolor paint that it turns into so it'll have this nice watery um, translucent look on the paper and it turns out really beautiful and it's very very easy to use and easy to control. Once you've added the water to your illustration, you can put the water and the paint brush away and just allow that illustration to dry. And while we're waiting for it to dry, we will um, illustrate our teapot and, uh, and tea kettle here. All right, so let's sketch out a few tea kettles and teapots, although I do recommend um, that you sketch from life. So if you have a teapot, I'd use it as a model today. But I'm doing for a kettle sort of this oblong shape with a rounded bottom and then just a straight spout at the sides, a very simple design. And to show that little handle at the top, I'm doing a bit of a coil, so very whimsical. For a teapot that's a little more bulbous, they can be a little tricky to draw. I recommend drawing across there to kind of keep you centered. And then just have fun. Look at the shape of the one in front of you if you have one. and. Uh, and just sort of play around with it. Using graph paper can be very helpful here as well. And um, I think it'll come together. It's just one of those designs that takes a little practice and you can always add some cute floral illustration on the side and that really um, brings it to life. Now that the illustration is truly dry and watercolor pencil crayons tend not to take too, too long, I can go back in with my Pigma Micron. I'm using the 05 again and I'm just going to add that sketchy black line that I love so much to my illustrations. So I'm just giving the tea tin especially all the detail that it needs to make it look like the actual tea tin that I use every day. So I'll write jasmine tea on there 
And then where there's sort of that ornate pattern, I'm just going to do a couple X's. So anytime you don't know how to illustrate something, you can always kind of come up with a shortcut. So little X's or cross hatching can represent a much more ornate pattern. And um, yeah, just adding that line to um, the entire illustration. And then to finish, I've got this great white gel pen that Lori gave me. Thanks, Lori. And I'm going to add a bit of um, dotting here to my kettle um, because I want it to look like an enamel kettle. And I think you guys know the one. Um, you see these everywhere and uh, they're sort of a camping kettle and they just have this old timey charm that I love. And um, that sort of brings the illustration to life. Well, thank you guys so much for watching today. Please hit that like button and the subscribe button if you enjoyed the video. And this week there were two tutorials, so go check out the first Christmas video of the year. It's all about how to paint these simple but beautiful watercolor holiday cards. I'll see you next week.